Hello and welcome to a match between IS Gaming and Motions. My name is Radnor and I'll be casting this event this evening. And just excited to get this matchup underway. And they will be picking their heroes in just remaining. a second. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team and the first ban for this matchup is going to be a Magnus. Very good ban there. Tend to see him banned out quite a bit. If he's not banned out, he does tend to make it into match. Yeah. As Magnus is an incredible initiator, and that Dark reverse polarity back. is a skill that you do not want to be going against your team. We do see a Nyx Assassin being banned out here yeah. as well. Of course, Great disable with the impale. The spike carapace is definitely not a skill you want going up against your team. Makes sense to see that band out as well. We're also going to be seeing a band of Batrider. Another great initiator. Standard bands. Uh, Lifestealer as well. Pretty basic bands. Nothing new. Nothing, you know, out of the ordinary. Makes sense to see these bands. Lifestealer, of course, is a very good later game carry, not someone you want going up against you. Great survivability with Rage and Infest. Um, Bat Rider, of course, a great initiator with the lasso, his flame break, great vision that he gets from that. Uh, makes sense to see them banned out here. Ten and seconds. I know mm -hmm. that I personally don't like seeing a great combination done with these teams mm -hmm. up against me, so it makes sense to see them banned out here. Um, time. we've got first pick for IS Gaming. They are going to go into a little bit of reserve time here, being, uh, quite, well, they just want to make sure that they get the perfect pick for their first pick here. As Motions does get the next two picks after them, they have to be thinking about their lineup as a whole and wondering which way that they're going to be going with this pick here. Do you want to go with... One of your supports, you want to go with your mid, which is probably going to be the Puck here. Uh, Puck is a great mid lane hero. He has good survivability, and he, of course, has a great disable there once he hits level 6 with the Dream Coil. No surprise to see Puck picked up. Uh, seen him in a lot of games in this current meta. Totally makes sense. He is definitely not a hero to be scoffed at plus his starting damage starts off rather remaining. high compared to some heroes um, which is definitely a Five huge advantage when remaining. you're going up against somebody in whether you go in the mid lane or any other lane um, to have an advantage in base damage definitely does not hurt you there uh, we are gonna see shadow demon being picked up here as well as a Drow Ranger for motions. Uh, Shadow Demon, of course, one of the most popular supports in the game right now. The disruption that he has, beautiful disable, as well as giving you uh, an offensive ability as well. If you disrupt your carry, you get basically a free Manta style out of it, so it makes sense to have him in the team. Shadow Poison can do a tremendous amount of damage, as well as his Demonic Purge, which is definitely a great ultimate to have. We do see, of course, Gyrocopter being picked up by IS Gaming. Very good carry there in Gyrocopter. He has very good late game potential. And um, the Darkseer will be picked up as well. Darkseer, of course, a great team fight hero. That Wall of Replica can do a tremendous Silence amount of damage later on in the game. And we do see a Silencer being picked up from Motions. Um, you've got a Silence with Drow Ranger and the Silence from both Last Word and uh, his Global Silence, that is going to be something that could potentially change the way that this game goes here. Uh, we are going to see a Queen of Pain being banned out, as well as a Rubik, a Nature's Prophet. Pretty standard bans. You don't want Queen of Pain in the mid lane. You don't want a Rubik being picked up to actually steal something like a Global Silence, or even, you know, a Disruption or a Demonic Purge. Uh, it makes sense to see these heroes banned out here. Nature's Prophet, of course, great split push. The ability to be anywhere on the map um, with his global teleport, not something you want to go up against. We do see Slark being banned out here as well. Slark has great survivability, especially once he gets his ultimate up and running. So it makes sense to see him banned out as well. And Lashrak and uh, Templar Assassin will be the final two bans. 
We are going to see a Sand King. Uh, nice pickup there with the Sand King. He does have a very good disable. The big skill to keep an eye on with him is going to be that Epicenter. Um, oh, Warlock will be picked up by Motions as well. Of course, Fatal Bonds, a huge skill. The ability, once it's fully leveled up, can link five heroes together. And you that damage is mitigated pretty much evenly between them. Um, we've got two more picks, one more for IS Gaming and one more for Motions. And uh, excited to see how this is going. Ten seconds remaining. You've got the Silencer with his Five global silence. You've got the Drow Ranger with her silence. You've got the Warlock with his golem. Shadow Demon, of course, a great support with his disruption. Uh, very good setup for motions, but a good setup for IS Gaming as well. We've got Puck and Gyrocopter. They just pick up an Outworld Devourer, a great carry. Not a lot of people in this game can just utterly decimate like Outworld Devour if he gets the farm that he needs. Of course, that can be said ju with just about anybody, but Outworld Devour is truly a nightmare when on the field. Uh, one more pick is left f before this matchup gets underway. I am personally excited to see this going, and I hope anyone out there watching this is as well. Um, they are going to go into a little bit of reserve time. They just want to be extra careful on their last pick. Um, and, and who's to blame them? I mean, they're going up against a big lineup of, of a Gyrocopter, Puck, Outworld Devourer team. You've got Sand King and Darkseer. I mean, great potential with this team here. There's so many different ways that this matchup can go just off of that lineup on its own. But they've got a good counterpick team. Um, one big thing to realize is Outworld Devourer's skill... His uh, Astral Imprisonment that steals intelligence, you've got four intelligence heroes on motions. Uh, only one agility hero here, so they are going to go with a Windrunner for their last pick. She's definitely uh, a great hero to pick. The Shackle Shot, very helpful in a team fight, as well as the Power Shot is a very good skill. Gives you a lot of range, a lot of ability with that. But she's also got the great survivability with that wind run. So no surprise to see Windrunner being picked out here. And this matchup is going to be underway. Totally excited for this matchup. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Okay, I'm gonna go over. Oh. Prepare for battle. Sorry about that. Going to go over who has who real quick. We're going to have Paulus on Silencer, Mr. Deja Vu on Windrunner, R. Grim on Warlock, Mellow Panda on Shadow Demon, and Genjuru X on Drow Ranger 4. The Radiant side, and for the Dire side, we're gonna have Play for Fun on Gyrocopter 813 on Sand King, Alexandria on Puck, Skeps on Darkseer, and Mist 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 on Outworld Devour. Um, as for lanes, we're gonna be seeing Silencer mid. We are going to see Windrunner up top on her own, and we are going to be seeing a tri lane. of Drow Ranger, Shadow Demon, and the Warlock here. Up top, uh, we are going to have a quick pause coming out from Windrunner here. A quick disconnect from Silencer here. As for lanes, uh, we're going to see what looks like Darkseer on the bottom lane. Puck will be going mid, and we're going to have a tri lane up top of Gyrocopter, Outworld Devourer, and Sand King. We do see some uh, wards coming out. The Radiant, of course, have wards here, keeping eye of this top rune spot. Um, 
the Dyer have a single word out right now in this lane just to keep an eye of who they're going to be going up in this top lane. And Silencer reconnects in. Sand King is going to put his first point in the Burrow Strike here. Makes sense. Good disable here. Um, the battle begins for good. It's a 2.17 second duration. And we see one, two, three, four, five, six people with the compendium. Again, I'm uh, letting everybody know that if you play Dota and you watch any matches, or even if you don't, that because of the purchases of the compendium that this international 2013 has become the biggest match in esports history um, it's beat any other competition and that's something very cool to know that that was raised Somebody by died. the people here Um, we do have a first blood up top. Gyrocopter was the first one to draw blood from that Windrunner. Sorry for missing it. Did not expect him to get the first blood so quickly. As I was saying, it, it's just cool to see that the, the community has just... That they're willing to to put in as much to make this the biggest competitive gaming event in the history of esports. So excited for that! And uh, nice. the compendium sure helps, as you saw. It gives a 25% bonus to everyone that you're playing at the same time. We do see a bottle being picked up here by Puck. We've got the the rocket barrage coming in. The burrow strike from Sand King and Silencer will fall mid. We do see a good amount of damage. Sand King will fall to Windrunner in the mid lane, but Puck is going to be going for Windrunner, and Windrunner will fall to the Puck in the mid lane. The teleport is coming out, but we're going to see Puck make it back to his side of the river. And very well done by IS Gaming. Um, they came in with the aggression. The Burrow Strike came up, was able to take down... Silencer in mid. Of course, Windrunner did get the kill on the Sand King himself. We do see a good amount of damage coming out to Shadow Demon here. Shadow Demon will drop. Puck has almost no health. Silencer is going on the Darkseer. Darkseer, of course, going to make it out with a little over a quarter health. Puck was down to, I mean, Puck is still at 17 health. Just shows you how low on health he got there. But he knew that he could survive to take down the Shadow Demon, even with that double damage. Um, very aggressive gameplay by IS Gaming here. If we look at CS, we see... Oh, they are going in on Windrunner again. You've got the ass the imprisonment out from Outworld Devourer. Windrunner is going to make it past the tower here. And we're gonna see two points in that astral imprisonment, which it definitely helps with his intelligence, as most of the heroes on this opposing team are intelligence heroes, except for Drow Ranger. So Definitely a good pickup with that. And uh, this matchup's turning out quite well. Draw Ranger is in first for CS. She's at 21, as opposed to Outworld Devourer's 20. Uh, in mid, we have 6 for Puck, 11 for Silencer. Pretty even for the Draw Ranger and Outworld Devourer here, though. Um, we do have. Gyrocopter getting no a kill on attack. Silencer in mid. That's not gonna hold. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And some pressure is coming out here the to really the, the tier one, one tower control. of the the Dyer side.
And that put great survivability with that level one phase shift. And of course, that'll come into even bigger play as this match continues on. Um, missed shot by the power shot from Windrunner. That could have been a problem. We do see Shadow Demon coming in and Puck being aware of this is going to be backing away just a little bit. Puck is at level 6 with his Dream Coil already and we see the Silencer is only at level 5. Still about a quarter of a level away from getting his global silence. And we do see this dire team coming in on the mid lane. The Dream Coil is up on Silencer. Darkseer is going to be doing a ton of damage with that ion shell and Puck gets the kill. We do see the teleports coming in from Warlock. The Fatal Bonds is between three different heroes. We're going to see the disruption will be out on the Puck. Puck is going to be in sort of a tough place. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Run, little bottom tower. Radiant's top tower is under attack. About time. Oh, that's not good for the Radiant. Great initiation. It all happened right before the Silencer got to level 6. Makes sense. You do not want him having that global silence. He now has level 6, and that will be the global silence. Um, I mean, we've got some heroes from the Dire team currently headed back to base to catch some health. But other than that, they really walked out of that quite well. Um... We do see Sand King coming up top. The imprisonment on Warlock. We're going to see Gyrocopter coming in with the Rocket Barrage. The Flat Cannon will be out. Shadow Demon is going to go down here. The Global Silence was out. And uh, we're going to see Warlock gets a kill on Gyrocopter, but Puck got a kill on the Warlock. Puck is going to be going down here as well as Sand King to the Silencer and Drow Ranger got a kill on Outworld Devourer just up top Radiance bottom tower is under attack I feel sad for them I don't think that fight went exactly the way IS gaming thought um, not a bad fight overall but they just I mean, if we look at the XP graph here, I feel we see that they were at almost a 4,000 advantage, and it's worked its way almost down to 1,000. And we see that they were at about a 3,000 advantage, and it's all the way down to 2,000. We see the, the imprisonment coming out from Outworld Devour. The pressure is going to be instantly taking down Draw Ranger. He used his ultimate there, the Sanity Eclipse, and he just saw the amount of damage that came out of it. Double kill. And my bad, I missed the, the whole fight going on on the bottom lane. We did have a Silencer take out Darkseer, but Silencer was taken Radius out as Auto well. Is under attack. Very aggressive play from both teams. We've got half health on the tier 1 tower on the bottom lane. And we do Radiant see this Radiant Tower team coming attack. in to defend this tower. The Dream Coil is out on Warlock. Warlock is going to cast Fatal Bonds on Puck, but it is on nobody else, so it's not really going to be that big of a deal. They're going to be coming in. We are going to see Warlock fall here. The Power Shot is going to do a great amount of damage from Windrunner, but we see Gyrocopter coming in, continuing to put the pressure on Windrunner. Drow Ranger does get the kill on Outworld Devourer up on the top lane, and Silencer is going to come in 
but not before the rest of this team is going to be able to take down the tier one tower. Silencer, of course, going for Sand King. He knows he's very low on health. And we are going to see the, the silence come out. Gyrocopter is going to fall here. And Darkseer, in sort of a bad position, he's using that iron shell to give some major harassment here. And a small vacuum coming in. We do see the disruption is come out on Darkseer. And Darkseer is going to finally have to back away. He's at about half health. He will make it out of this just fine. If we look at kills, we see nine kills for Puck, four for Gyrocopter, four for Silencer. Um, if we look at levels, we've got level nine on Drow and Silencer. Definitely not a level you want to be in is having them in an advantage. As you see, Puck and Outworld Devour are keeping up with them. Darkseer is close behind at level seven. And then we've got sixes and below. Windrunner and Shadow Demon are at a lowly four and three. Definitely not a position you want to be in. And if we look at items real quick, we will see that the Silencer only has the Null Talisman and Power Treads. We've got standard boots up on Windrunner. Warlock has standard boots and a headdress. Shadow Demon doing only just a magic stick in his items. We do see the Astral Imprisonment coming out. The golem is going to be the called into this battle. Has seen better days. Come back to this items in just a minute. The radiant should really do something about that. Nice burrow strike. The call down is called out. We are going to see silencer in the middle of that call down. The disruption is out on Outworld Devour, and Silencer is going to get a kill on Darks here. We're going to see the Epicenter coming out, and a, a good amount of damage. Warlock is trying to hide in the trees here. Puck gets a kill on Silencer, and we do see Sand King get a kill on Warlock. Sand King is going to teleport away. And this puck is in a very bad position. We do see the imprisonment coming out. The silence from puck, but it's not going to be quick enough. And Drow Ranger was able to get the kill on Outworld Devourer. Just that possible one last hit, and Drow Ranger would have gone down. But she's going to walk away from this fight. And if we look at items. Still, we see no real big items being picked up. We do have four staff on Outworld Devourer now. Um, standard boots. We are going to see Drow Ranger picking up a Yasha here. So, that's going to be the start of some of her bigger items. Ah, regeneration. And we see these three in the mid lane. Shatter Demon, Silencer, and Warlock, they are going to be just probably pushing this lane forward, hoping to do some damage to the Tier 1. Of course, their Tier 1 is at less than a quarter health. The Dyer's Tier 1 has barely any damage to it. Outworld Devour, definitely uh, an okay pick. He has great potential, but he's definitely item reliant. And because of that, we're going to see that he has been picked off multiple times already. And the big question is, will he be able to get the farm to be big enough to be able to beat that Drow Ranger before it's too late? Um, we do see Shadow Demon pushing Gyrocopter back, Puck coming in. The call down, as well as the silent and the dream coil. Beautiful dream coil there. Gyrocopter gets a kill on silencer. Puck gets a kill on shadow demon. We do see the golem come out from Warlock. Oh. Warlock gets a kill on Gyrocopter. Sand King gets a kill on Drow Ranger. And we're going to see Puck going on 
Windrunner, but Windrunner is gonna use the wind run away. The golem falls. By the gods, the Dyer's bottom tower doesn't even have arms to defend itself. What a brave Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. And that matchup turned out definitely an advantage for IS Gaming. They did what they had to do. They came in and they focused on the heroes that were taking them down. They focused on Draw Ranger early on. They focused on Silencer early on. And they realized that that was a super well-placed Dream Co with a call down. Held the heroes in place. They were in there. We are going to see... The Fatal Bond's coming out. Call down. Silencer is going to fall again. Warlock's going to be running back. We've got Shatter Demon is going to get the disruption out on Sand King, but Sand King is going to make it out okay. Outworld Devourer, of course, in a very bad position. The Fatal Bond's is probably going to drop him here, and Warlock gets the kill with the Fatal Bond's. Gyrocopter is going to go down, but not before Gyrocopter gets a kill on Shatter Demon. And this Drown Ranger and Warlock combo will be coming up to push the tier one tower the on the top, top lane. Doing its best, but it doesn't look good. We've got the fortification coming out, Just and like Drow is going to run back. We've got Puck coming out on top to defend the tower. And another two teleports in. We've got Gyrocopter and Outworld Devourer coming up top. If we see We've got the Frost Arrows are fully leveled up, the Silence is fully leveled up, and the Precision Ore is fully leveled up on Draw Ranger. She's only got one more point to put in Marksmanship, but that will be at level 16. She is doing incredibly well at this point in time. Radiance Top Tower has fallen. And if we look at levels, we see Drow is at 14, Puck is at 13, Outworld Devourer is at 11. Definitely a disadvantage for that Outworld Devourer. And Silencer is at 10. It's going to be hard to push up against this Drow Ranger. The, the higher level she gets, the faster her attack speed gets. And it just puts you in a worse and worse position. And this Outworld Devourer is just not getting the items that he truly needs. He's not continuing to get the farm that he needs. He is going to be going bottom to not only push the lane back, but to get that extra farm he needs. He has great, great damage potential, but if you don't give him that potential with the items that he needs, it, it's truly wasted on him because he is a very item dependent hero. Um, we are going to see Draw Ranger in mid. Puck very aware that she's there. Invisibility. Or see Sand King coming in. He wants to go on this draw ranger, but there's really no team to back him up. We are gonna see Puck coming in Dream Coil. Beautiful Burrow Strike, and the disruption is gonna come out from Shadow Demon. The golems here, the wall of replica, and the global silence is coming down. We're going to see Puck fall to silencer. Darkseer is going to get a kill. There's a shackle shot on Sand King. Sand King's in a bad position. The mechanism comes out, call down, and we're going to see Shadow Demon fall here. The golem falls. Darkseer still stands. Shadow King, or Sand King still stands. And Outworld Devourer are going to push this tier 2 tower in mid. We see an utter T wipe for Motions. Radiance Mental Tower is very well played. It did not look like they were going to be in an advantage there. Once that global silence came out, it looked really bad for IS Gaming. But the advantage that they had was they actually sort of waited out with the Outworld Devourer and the Gyrocopter, and Outworld Devourer is picking up his Ghost Scepter here, um, trying to stay out from some of the damage that the heroes of 
Radiance top tower is under motions attack. are able to just throw at him. Um, definitely a good team fight. The the advantage that they had was that they left some of their heroes out to come in with full health once the ultimates had been spent from motions team and because of that not only did they stay alive but they were able to actually come out on top of that team fight it worked well for them and we'll see how they continue to go the matchup here it's going above 10,000 XP advantage for the dire we do see gold advantage of about 14,000 in advantage for them. The big difference is that we've got Ghost Scepter up on Dark Seer. We've got Mechanism up on Dark Seer as well. We're going to see some major damage coming out here. The Global Silence will come out. The pressure is going on Draw Ranger. They're putting the pressure exactly where they need to. Silencer falls, Draw Ranger falls. The Fatal Bonds is out, but not enough to bring anyone down. The only person to survive this match was Windrunner. Very well played. And they're going to be going for Roche here. Getting an even bigger advantage. We do see Mechanism up on Warlock and up on Darkseer. Um, pretty understandable. Drums is out on Gyrocopter. Gyrocopter, of course, at 2,300 gold, he is going to be going up to 3,000 from this, and he is going to have to start going for his damage items. He needs to get the damage so that he can take down his opponents quicker, and we expect to start seeing some of those items, and there's a Demon Edge coming out. Of course, giving 46 more damage, that will start to help. Um, as he continues to grow that, we'll see where he goes with that. We got... We got Outworld Devour, Darkseer, and Sand King coming bottom. They're going to hopefully put some pressure on this Tier 2 tower. They are going to be met up by... Windrunner and Bay's Warlock, and it's going to be keeping them I back. Them. Drow Ranger is, is putting some pressure out Bay on the Tier Bay's 1 tower in mid for the Dire, but the fortification does come out, as well Bay's. as the teleport. We're going to see Gyrocopter coming here. We do have some smoked up heroes here. They're in the bottom lane, not too far from their Radiant team, but they just don't want to take the initiative. Drow Ranger is going to run in. We're going to see Outworld Devour coming in using the Imprisonment. The Shackle Shot and the Disruption are coming out. The Wall of Replica, beautifully placed. We're going to see Drow Ranger taking Outworld Devour down, but if it wasn't for that Burrow Strike, Outworld Devour would have fallen here. We see Darkseer in a bad position, but Putt gets a kill on Windrunner. We're going to see Darkseer get a kill on Warlock, and Sand King gets a kill on Silencer. Beautifully done. The Tier 2 tower is going to fall, and they're going to be pushing the pressure to the Tier 3 tower at this point. You've got two seconds before Shadow Demon's back, but you've got 25 seconds before Drow Ranger is back. 20 seconds for Silencer. I mean, they're going to be able to take some... And we see a very quick kill of Shadow Demon there. Windrunner is back in. And the Shackle Shot will bring Darkseer to a stop for just a second. 
good power shot, but you see the mechanism is used. The golem does come out right on top of everyone. Beautiful fatal bonds, but we're going to see Outworld Devour destroy the tower. Puck's going to get a kill on Warlock. And we see them just continuing to put pressure on Excuse me. <laughs> this Rax. And the melee racks are down on the bottom. They're going to be putting pressure out to the range racks. We see the burst strike right come out. Shadow Demon falls. Global Silence will be coming out from Silencer. But. Call down just misses on Drow Ranger. Drow Ranger will get a kill on Gyrocopter. We can see the teleport coming in from Warlock. The Fatal Bonds. And again, another beautiful use of the mechanism. Just keeping this team alive. They're not even going back. Dream Coils out. We're going to see Our World Devourer coming in. Beautiful Burrow Strike. And Puck gets a kill on Windrunner. Dark Zero on Silencer. Sand King on Warlock. And we're going to see. Again. Shadow Demon, the only person left alive. Gyrocopter, the only person down for this Dire team. And they're going to just stay in this base. They haven't even had to be pushed out of the base at this point in time. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Oh, that's got to hurt. Radiance we do see Windrunner just spawning attack. in. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. That's not gonna hold. We do see the imprisonment coming out on Darkseer. Darkseer is gonna be hit by Silencer, but he's doing beautiful, beautiful vacuum, followed by a burrow strike from Sand King. We're gonna see the shackle shot come out, but I mean, Silencer and Warlock both fell there. Beautiful, beautiful play. That is going to be the GG should be called here any second. It surprises me to see that it hasn't even come out yet. We're going to see a beautiful, beautiful Dream Coil on Drow Ranger. And there goes Drow. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Radiant's top tower has fallen. Not so radiant anymore, it turns out. Radiant's Puck does have a level 5 Dagon, yes, which is indeed. definitely, I mean, it just shows how great they're doing here. The golem comes out, but he Radiant's only survives a couple of seconds. Beautiful vacuum. Again, this team can stand right outside of their fountain when the other, Radiant's when this radiant team has the advantage of being in the fountain. And we're going to see the top tier 3 and Rax come down. Gyrocopter, of course, been pushing that this whole time. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. That's not gonna hold. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. It's just, I mean, there's <laughs> the GG. There's nothing really they can do. The GGs are called beautiful play by IS Gaming. Definitely impressed with the aggression that they brought. They were at a slight disadvantage for a little bit there with the Draw Ranger being able to hold down Outworld Devour. But Outworld Devour is definitely a damage dealer. Holy shit. And just very well played. I mean, if we look at the kills here, we see 26 kills on Puck, 13 on Sand King. If you ask me, the, the VIP of this match was the Sand King. He has 27 assists. He did a tremendous amount of damage. And he had some excellent Burrow Strikes. It is because of him in my opinion, that this team just did as well as they did.
I do want to thank you guys for tuning in. Again, my name is Radnor. You can follow me on both Twitch and YouTube. Uh, this was a matchup between Motions and IS Gaming. Thank you for tuning in this evening. Definitely enjoyed myself. Great matchup. IS Gaming came out, did exactly what they came here to do, and that was to show exactly what they were capable of. Great plays out of Sand King with 27 assists, definitely giving him the MVP of...